Excuse me. Oh. You guys ready to talk about what's the, what would be the single feature that would be important uh, for you to have in a watch? How you doing, Brian? Um, hey, Graham. As you can see, it's a good afternoon here, <laughs> Graham. Uh, we're getting a we're getting a nice winter day today. Hey, Brummonat, how you doing? The most is ex exhibition case back. Yeah, I like those a lot too. Uh, it's exhibition. There are a lot of things I like, okay, to have. Exhibition case back is one of them. But when I started thinking is that, well, what, what would be the one feature? Say, okay, there's one thing, and if it doesn't have this, I'm walking. <laughs> you know, The reason for this, uh, for, for the whole question, is see if we can sort of come up with a real – certain kind of core quality that we're looking for in a watch it can uh, i have some watches i really like with a solid case back i do prefer the um the other kind but anyway hi equus a crown <laughs> hi travis off to buy some neat foot oh yeah i tell you what it doesn't take much here one of these things i got one of these little i guess they're called atomizers i have i i ordered a i ordered some neat foot and they sent this big can of it you don't need very much uh, this is some neat foot oil for uh if your if your uh, leather band or your gator band gets sort of stiff and crummy uh it's good you very very primitive i guess Proportion. Proportion. That's a good one. I like that. Hey, mask. Need at least 24 hour power reserve. Okay. Hey, Travis. Loom is my one requirement. That's interesting. Loom is, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't use them in the dark so much, but I guess, you know, a lot of people, I do think Loom is uh, uh, important. Hey, Bomba, not let me see. Another very important feature is that it's manual wound. Yeah, you know, that's another thing that's interesting. Um, I just noticed there's a watch I'm wearing, the watch I have here, the other watch. There's three watches right in my vicinity right now. They're all hand wound. Um, I do like hand wound. But some other ones that are some real favorites also are automatic, like my... Um, uh, Van Cleef on our Pels, RDC at Ur Dyer. That thing has this little platinum micro rotor, and I don't like micro rotors. <laughs> uh, hey, Paul, how's it going? A minute hand. Yeah, I I like minute hands. I I, I you know those one handed things. I I I'm, I don't care for them either. I do like hour and minute hands. I can live without a second hand. Thing I like about second hands is sort of lets you know your watch is working, and that's about it. Hey, Rancher, how you doing? Hi, Kofi. <laughs> oh, that's good, Kofi. Those Loom Cartier tanks are nice durability oh that's an interesting one paul a lot of um i don't know there there's different senses of durability on the one hand is one that's not going to fall apart from normal use another type of durability is sort of a like a sports watch where you can go out and i don't know you know <laughs> go to your mud wrestling or anything that you want in it Put this like this, show off my uh, 
Hi, Harvey. How you doing? William from Florida Keys. A bracelet and stick indices. Ah, that is an interesting combination. If if I were in the Keys, in fact, uh, if I were still teaching at the University of Florida, uh, I could I could understand having a bracelet. I have one watch with a bracelet, and oh, by the way, I just ordered another bracelet. I ordered one. Uh, some guys were showing off the main bracelet, and they had it on uh, one of uh, the Lariques, and it really looks good. So I thought, well, that'd be a nice thing to have. Um, and then I can put it on different uh, watches that uh, are on a hot day or something. Or if I go visit William down in the Keys, I'll go down there and say, I got a bracelet. So <laughs> for some reason, you'd think now a gator, gators are from Florida, uh, and yet a gator strap won't hold up in, in Florida heat. Hey, Brom, a jumping hour is a nice feature, as with the Monsieur de uh, Chanel. However, probably the most, not the most important one. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I jumping, I like something I can look at that is different in jumping minutes and jumping seconds and jumping everything are sort of fun. You know, there's a, the um, Jaja Lacoutre that has the jumping seconds are called true seconds, which I think is sort of interesting because I believe their first use was they used to call them doctor's watches where they're taking a pulse and they'd look at the old watch and it was like that. So it's easier to count the pulse that way. Hey, Junior, how you doing? You know, I, I had the hardest time coming up with a single thing that I could say I've got, if I if it doesn't have this, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to think what, what would be the most important thing and I look for. And, and I find there, there are different kinds of things that I really like, and sometimes it's the main feature of the watch, and that's why I like the watch. And that's something I don't have in my collection. Like, for example, I got a, um, a regulator. I got my $200 regulator. And uh, just because I didn't have a regulator. so But that's not something. I mean, if you get a regulator, you, you, want, you want to get one with three dials. But <coughs> I don't know. <clears throat> hey, Goldfinger. A minute hand. Okay. Have the minute hand. Uh, I forgot what the those one. Let's see, what else could you have? What about a jumping minute? Would that be okay? Hey, we wear the mask. I had a long list of only ifs for my first watch. But as my collection grew, so did my uh, red lines. Oh, interesting. Hey, David, I'm scared to get any watch with at least 50 meters of water resistance. Maybe someday I'll grow out of it. You want at least 50 meters of water resistance? That's 150 feet. Where are you going to go with 150 feet? <laughs> are you going to fall in a, a crater? I know a lot of people, you know... <coughs> People act as though, well, you know, so what? All right, it's got good uh, water resistance. I think the main value of having good water resistance is dust resistance. You don't want any dirt or dust in your watch. But one of the problems, sometimes, have you ever, they have these great big fat, um, uh, oh God, what are they, uh, washers, so like big washers in there that, um, and some of them are quite thick to have better water resistance. So you end up with this great big washer that's thick and sort of yucky. That would be my only thing about it. But I, I, I don't take any of my 
I mean, there's, you know, they all have about, I think, maybe 20 meters, and that's 20 meters more than they would need with me. Hey, David. I'm scared to get a watch. Oh, okay. Is that with at least 50 or without 50? I think the least important is a, is a retrograde date. Huh. Uh, last month, waited 31 days to see it work and fell. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Brian. Have a. <laughs> that's sort of like you know going to sleep on a on a on a, uh, a total eclipse. <laughs> Hi, Jay Zabu. I really want to dial side power, side power reserve. You know, um, I like power reserves. I like them on the front and on the back. One of my favorite watches is my FP Jean Chronomat Suvain because it's got it on the front. And if it's getting low, I can take a look at it. Uh, both my, uh, both of them, in fact, both my re re resonance and my, um, Chronomat Surveyne both have the power reserve indicator. I guess early on, FP Journal was really big on having it. I'm trying to think what other watches. Oh, you know what I like on the back of my um, H Moser. Now, Moser likes these really clean dials. And uh, so they put it on the back. I think that's a good idea. Fifty meters is fine for everyday use. Automatic, you like automatics? Automatic. I don't mind them. I have some. In fact, I have some I like very much. My um, what's it called? Fabergé. Uh, my Fabergé Alexi. There's something about that watch I just really like. Frederick Piguet 1150 movement in it. Love that watch. Uh, it it has a solid back. It has a this really cool looking rotor, but it's hidden. They got the Imperial Eagle and all of this good stuff, and then they had a solid case back. But it's solid white gold, so it's not so bad. You know, I like I I like gold watches. Um, not necessarily for the color, but for the heft. Um, I've come to like white gold. I never liked white gold before because it seemed like, you know, why pay more for white gold when it looks the same as steel? I feel the same way about platinum. I can't, if my platinum watch, I got one platinum watch, can't tell the difference between it and stainless steel watch. Okay, following in a pool subjects to several bars of pressure. That's why, okay. All right, well, that makes sense. If I had a watch that I was taking, uh, you know, in in the ocean or something, uh, I would borrow somebody else's. <laughs> I will, I, I would avoid falling into a pool. I, the kind of pools where people throw each other into, I mean, the kind of parties, I haven't been invited to those in a long time. Hi, Thomas. How you doing? Hacking seconds is a non-negotiable feature. You know, Equus, I don't like hacking. All right. There I said it. There's the... I still go back to... I mean, and some of my favorite watches, again, have hacking. And that's simply because the way the brake comes down on the balance wheel. The engineers at um, Paddock Philippe years ago told the head, they said, look, hacking is not good uh, for, the, for the mechanics of it. And so for a long time, and I guess still to some extent, they don't have hacking. None of F.P. Jorns have hacking. Um, I don't, 
know if our if Eureka is hacking or not. <laughs> That's one thing I didn't look at. But you know, some people I can understand why you like hacking. Um, stop second sounds better. I always confuse hacking with when I used to do a lot of programming. Hacking re meant, you know, some ham-fisted programmer just strong-arming all of his code, whereas hacking in this means some hammer coming down on your poor, long-suffering balance wheel. I mean, it's like somebody said it really interesting. The way hacking works is like throwing a stick in a bicycle spokes. You know, like <laughs> anyway, well, if you like hacking, a lot of people like it. Uh, just a different view of it is all. I like power reserve, but not on automatics. You know what, Travis? I agree with that. It's so hard to tell with on an automatic. It make for for I'm the same way. It makes a lot of sense. A wind up watch power reserve indicator makes a lot of sense. On a on an automatic, you know, it's, it doesn't make as much sense, at least to me. I know a lot of people like it no matter what. Hey, John. You like my sweater? This is my H. Moser et Company sweater. I think I won it. I don't know how many years I entered the contest to win one of their sweaters. Every year, H. Moser has a contest. This year, I won one. Very happy. <laughs> uh, Yeah, uh, William, I agree uh, about the weight. I like the heft of gold. That's one thing. Sometimes, though, you have a really something about a movement is a little heavier. Uh, I know in our Larique, it is not a heavy watch. And I I was, I was, tried on a bunch of Laurent Ferrier watches, and I thought, that these things are, they don't have the heft I like. And I was told, well, those are, those are steel models. And if you had platinum or gold that that feel a little better and there's some truth to that hi edwardus how you doing yeah durability i like that one hey john good thing with white gold uh you might not uh get your arm cut off <laughs> yeah most people think it's stainless steel you're right that's a very good point <laughs> The you know the poor guy who gets his arm cut off for a copper <laughs> watch or brass. I look at my brass watch; it looks like gold. Hi, Awoken. How you doing? I never heard of watchmakers complaining about scuffs on balance wheels. Hmm. Uh, from hacking levers, uh, it's not from the scuffs on balance wheels, uh, and it has to do more with the way that the in terms of engineering it comes down. It's not scuffs uh, awoken, Marvin. Oh, we don't have hockey. <laughs> Good. Now, some watches, um, if you want to have hacking, they this is this is one. This is my new. Um, ah, hang on. Whoops. I got to show you something. This, if you have to have a watch that has something like hacking, what they, what the uh, Maritz Grossmann does, let me see if I can see it with a, if you can put it here. Uh, what I'm trying to do is, is to show, there it is. Okay. Uh, see right here, this little guy right here, what Moritz Grossmann does, as soon as you start winding it, uh, something locks. It's some kind of gear locks here so that the uh, second hand stops. So you wind it up, and, and before it will start running again, you have to push in this little pusher. And so it does it without hacking. Why should, 
watch should have re okay yeah all right simple dress watch yes they should have some water resistance i agree but i i see it as you know you washing your hands and things like that you you don't want you don't want to have no water resistance you just don't need a ton where you have some big fat rubbery looking gasket in there to keep it out hi hans how you doing is it hans from hamburg or is it i think that was right right hans Hi, Equus. I must admit, I didn't know any of that, nor that uh, it had a, a stick in a well. <laughs> yeah. It's just what you have. Think of it this way, Eugene, um, as more, more accurately, too, a, a stagecoach. In the old Western movie, the stagecoach would come into town, and then they would pull the brake, and the brake clamps on and and stops the wheel it slows it down and it it goes it rattles through the uh, gear train now having said that like i said some of my favorite watches have hacking uh such as my um uh my uh langenheim my langenheim frederick II, which is the, the the great thing about it, it has a very open back and you can see it and you know, it's like to me, it's like oh, you know. And I, like I said, the the engineers at Patek Philippe did tell the head of Patek Philippe that that's not good. Seiko's uh, magic lever system has made me wary of uh, bidirectional winding on most other automatics. You know, that's an interesting thing, uh, Marvin. Or is that right? Awoken Marvin. Anyway. That is interesting. Um, the bidirectional thing was was a problem on on rotors. Um, on yeah, I I don't know what it is. Of uh, again, the the technics of that. But I did understand that. I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of automatics, but if I had one, and I think I do. I don't know whether it's bidirectional or unidirectional, but I understand from somewhere that the unidirectional ones were better. Hi, Arnaud. Most important thing is how it, it fits. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, fit includes a lot of things. It includes a band. It includes the size of the watch for your wrist. A lot of things like that. I think that is important. Hey, Mark. Uh, now, there's a guy. Mark is, he got this. <laughs> Mark J got this really nice F.P. Jorn Conomet Suvain. And I don't know, to some extent, I think he got taken advantage of by one A.D., but Mark went after them and said, look, you know, this was mine and I had down payment and everything. They finally uh, got uh, F.P. Jorn to do the right thing. And I think that was great. And the the one who was not so nice is no longer an A.D. for F.P. Jorn, which also serves them right. Hey, Lee, no dates on dress watches. Oh, boy. Um, I, I'm not a date fan. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got my, now I have a far side calendar. So I look at my far side calendar every time. So many of my watches are hand wound that if there's a date on it, it gets unwound. And so when I, you know, and, it, and I'm going through rotation, and I come back, and the date's wrong. It's always wrong on mine, and so I got to figure out, and then is it go to the morning or evening. The one watch I have that I, it really works well with, and it's a dual time zone watch, is my uh, Parmigiani uh, Hemispheres. Wonderful watch. And doing it, you can look at the two... Uh, night day indicators and you can tell whether it's a.m. or p.m. simply by the way they're set up 
And so I can look at those and know whether I got to go around, uh, you know, t- uh, for the date. I just don't like screwing with dates, uh, Lee. But so I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know if it's appropriate on any watch, but, you know, it's sort of like if people like dates on their watches, and I, I think it's sort of a cool thing. But so often the date is this little bitty box and you can't see it. If you have dates on a watch, what I like are the hand dates. I don't know why, but I see a hand date and you have two types of indication. You have a positional uh, indication from where the date stick is. And then at the top, this is the kind I like the best, are the ones with a little cup at the top or the little uh, crescent at the top of the hand date. And it sort of puts it right there. Those I like. So I think I have one, but I'm not sure. Ah, uh, Awoken Marvin. I like that too. <laughs> All right. Uh, I once had this wonderful, really, it was a nice watch. It was El Rob. Oh, I forgot what the name of it was. Uh, but it, uh, the people who made the watch weren't exactly telling me the truth about it. And I said, well, what kind of movement is in it? And they said it was a Frederick Begay. I said, oh, all right. Uh, what kind? Well, they weren't sure. I said, do you have a picture of it? Well, they sent me this blurry picture. Turned out that it was an ETA Pezu uh, 7001, which is a fine little movement, but that's a little bitty thing. So uh, I think Marvin's got a good point. I've got a, on my, um, what is it? My Beauvais, uh, my Beauvais 1930. That is, it fits it like a glove. It's really nice. Um, Let me see how this, I I like a, I like a watch that fits well. This one's got sort of a thick uh, sides to it. Uh, and this is a 4,400. And I know that they have a 36 millimeter version. So in a 36 millimeter version, a 4,400 probably yeah, will fit it better. But this one, it's so pretty to look at. When looking at the movement, I don't care. <laughs> but by and large, I agree. I like movements that fit. Um. That's one thing about the Larique watches. We the uh, we we have them. We have all of everything is made for us uh, the, from the movement, and so we know the exact dimensions of the movement. Dealing with the, uh, we also do the case. We have it done bespoke. Everything is done that way, and so we have really good matching on that. Yeah, quick set date is nice. I agree. Hi, Truman. Easter Eat 1921, right. Case composition and proportions are the most important. Difficult to pull off timeless designs. Hey, Sydney. My vote is simple. My watches must be easy to read at a glance. You know, I like that too. I, that's another thing I do like. Um, This is as much as I like this watch. Um, it has, uh, let me see if I can put it, the, the, it looks like skeletonized, sort of a open face. What it is that makes it okay with me, all of the, the insides here are made up, the design are watch hands. They're all different kinds of watch hands. <laughs> Look at the thing. There are all these watch hands. You have to sort of hunt for the hands for day and night, but I like the smooth ones too. Hey, Abdul, how you doing, man? Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hey, Eddie, how would you like to buy a watch company? No, buy one, lead one. Uh, You and Abdul can (laughs) run it for a while. Worst nightmare is adjusting day date. With a moon face. Oh, geez. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine that. I, 
you know, for moon phases, I like pushers uh, the best. Uh, I've got a, I'm trying to think if I got one. One of my watches with the seven, the Jacquet 736 has a moon phase. And it's got a little pusher. I push the old moon phase with the pusher. And it, tut, 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 but it doesn't work otherwise. <laughs> so, hey, Caesar, most important feature. I can afford it. There you go. I actually, I I have too many cases where that's not <laughs> not the feature I want. End up eating peanut butter sandwiches for five months. Hey, Dino. I really like a big date. So do I. If you're going to have a date, have a nice big one. I agree with that. Uh, you know, a lot of Rolex users have, they don't like what they call the Cyclops, the sort of magnifying glass. Actually, I think it's a good idea. Um, but, you know, what do I know? I'm not, ex <laughs> I'm not a Rolex guy by a long shot. But I like that feature. I mean, you can see the date. Uh, hey Truman, all Moser watches uh, fill the case. You bet. Hebdo Madari is also uh, made to the case. You know, I think that that was one of um, Michel Pomigliani's first movements that he made, and I do think they they sort of built the case around that. That's a wonderful watch. They're uh, don't get me started on Hebdo Madari because that thing is in some really interesting places. You know, another thing that I do like, um, if you have a, I like shaped movements. If you get a rectangle watch or even a Tano watch, I like the shaped movements rather than a round one. It's sort of the round movement in a square hole. I like the, the ones that have a shape movement. You know, one of my favorite, very favorite combinations, here I'm saying nice things about Rolex again, is the Prince. The way that movement uh, fits the Prince case, you know, they had, a, they had a sort of take the Rolex uh, watchmakers out of their cages and let them do some creative stuff. Proportional hand lengths. I hate it when the hands are too short or too thin. You know, I'll tell you something interesting about that, Abdul. Um, there's something called, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's called the golden ratio, and it's from a uh, from an ancient architecture. They use the golden ratio. It's also called phi. Uh, the ratio is 1.6. One or 1.62 to one, and uh, all of the Parmigiani hands, the proportions are proportions to the uh, to the golden ratio. You know, I wonder if the ones on the hands on our watches are the seven thousand one is a great movement, but it is tiny. Yeah, and alternatively, the sixty four ninety eight is huge, and I love it. And I like the clones. Hey, just Tom, how you doing? Sorry if you already heard this, <laughs> had this. Uh, just got on. Uh, for me, a fair price. Oh, my God. <laughs> a fair price is, I think, that's sort of income relative, I would guess. Uh, I know what you mean, no. Uh, a fair price is important. I, You know, sometimes an unfair price is any price I can't afford, <laughs> which puts for a lot of them. Have you seen the new uh, Vestron Constantin lady overseas with courts movement and a 50,000? Wow, yikes, that is a lot. You know, um, Graham, Lone Jeans, and I think I just said this the other day, Lone Jeans is one of those brands, I think, that is well underestimated. Uh, they really are very well-made watches. 
You know, another watch that's well made, they haven't always had the best movement, but they're really good watches. Uh, is uh, now I can't think of the name. Uh, the what, 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 what are they? Nah, I'll think of it in a second. The oh. Ah, never mind. I'll, I'll 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 come back to it. Hi, Eddie. For me, it's a second hand or something that moves quicker uh, than the minute hand on the dial side. Don't know if it's because I like the precision or just seeing something move quickly. Yeah, Eddie. I tell you, the nice thing about that is you know the watch is wound. You know, otherwise you have to check the back. Um, this our next Larique watch is not going to have the small seconds instead we're having that 30 second uh retrograde uh, i've got a 30 second retrograde on my um harry winston now ah, i got that thing at the tip of my tongue yeah i do like them but i i'll tell you um uh, some of my, some of the watches I happen to like a lot, like my Fabergé doesn't have anything on the front except hour and minute, and and then it's got a solid back. I drive, <laughs> but I still like it, and I can't hear well enough to hear whether it's ticking or not. So <laughs> you got, yeah, it's weird. Hey, magnifying glasses is, is ugly. War, I know, I know, Truman. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying for visibility <laughs> my rolex rolex odors hate those things i know that hey sydney my watch must have a crown that is easily managed that is a good one i like that too you know i like the um the fairly flat crown that the uh fp jorns have it they're pretty easy to wind they're a little harder but i don't like i mean because of the way they're sort of flattened and uh, set up, you don't snag them on anything. On the other hand, my um, the Urban Jurgensen is got a little sort of very easy to wind, but a little too much crown in that respect. The design uh, language of modern Parmigiani, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like Parmigiani, just about everything about them. Hey, Faisal, agree with a fair price. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's sort of like the, the unicorn of watch collectors is finding a fair price. Fair price to me is, I don't know. It's hard to say what a fair price is. Even better than a fair price, what I like is an inexpensive price. It's unfair on the, on the uh, watch collector's side. Those are the ones to have. Another great feature, a low-key watch that significant others isn't going to ask you how much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi, Dino. Um, quarter's eye, long G. Yeah, everybody likes those things. Retrograde is even better than normal secondhand. You want to see something move? Yeah, I, I. The only reason I use a secondhand is to see that it's wound. Now on my Chomet, I've got a Ferris wheel, and it has this wonderful slow movement, and it has those two big ag, uh, agonies. A's, I guess, Agonese gears with the springs in the in the uh, uh, gear teeth, and that thing is that thing is a beauty. It's just a beautiful movement, and a, a seconds. It just has the Ferris wheel. I like that. Have the second uh, retrograde on a Chronos with balance. Hey, Paul. Uh, Paul is agreeing with Sydney. Good. Where's Sydney's comment? <laughs> hey, Faisal, maybe uh, not a feature per se, but a solid crunch when winding is important for me. 
I'll tell you, that's one thing. Um, uh, I, if one of my favorite watches I had was a Patek Philippe Calatrava, and that thing was so smooth. It was like it felt like the uh, stem went into a jewelry box, and it was just sort of stirring up all of these things, just smooth as smoothest wine that ever felt until we got our Lurique. The Lurique wine is this wonderful, smooth one. I think you might like that. <laughs> so no crunch. But I, you know, I, I know what you mean by that. So you feel the quarters. I have the 32nd retrograde. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, Paul. Uh, Abdul, uh, the worst crowns are those uh, thin, smooth ones. Uh, hand watch, yeah, you need a grippy crown. Hand winding is absolute must, even in vintage watches. Just um, interchangeable straps. You know, I like that too. That's a good point. And by interchangeable, I mean ones that you can put on either with a, you know, one of the quick release things that are use a tool and your uh, spring bar. Um, yes, I think those are important in that respect. There may be some other ones like the, um, Vesseron Content 10 overseas, the new ones that came out in 19, uh, 2016. Uh, those have three straps and are, they're not only quick put on and take off, but they're also interchangeable. The problem is, uh, they would cost a lot to have, um, to have them done. You know, I tell you, a watch I like a lot, but uh, has that issue is the Bugari of uh, Octo Roma. They have some kind of convoluted strap on there, but it's really a nice one, but you can't just go and I don't think they have them at regular strap stores. Yeah, the smooth ones. Yeah, I had a... I, I had a watch once and I had wound it so much that it did become smooth. Ah, okay, guys. Listen, I'm way over time. So let me pick up this last ones and I'm going to have to have to scram. Um, Oh, Truman, your your fair price is manufacturing price, but it's 30 to 25% overhead. Alas, just to, in your dreams is right. The formulas is usually six times to 10 times the manufacturing price. But you've got to remember, if you go into an AD, 50% of what you're paying for the watch is just for the AD has nothing that's whatever it costs to manufacture is added to that, to marketing, to advertising, to shipment, to storage, to all of these other kinds of things. That was really one of the reasons we formed Lurique so that we could have a really nice watch with all, all of the things we'd never use. 6119G is a dream watch for me, but it won't, get that at a fair price some things you know the gerber gerbel for say that would be the hand wound that would be what i'd love to have but i don't know it's like two hundred thousand dollars now or something crazy like that the same thing with um oh smith roger smith watches you know they're and they're they take such a long time to make. I mean, I've seen Roger Smith start with a literally a rod of gold and he's making the old cases and everything. Okay, let's see. Eric, what are your thoughts on Carl Haas hair springs? They're very good. They're used in um, Hubbring 2 uses them uh, and they're excellent. Yeah, uh, you mentioned, the, I just, yeah, I didn't see the bottom part. Okay, 
All right, guys, listen, um, got to run. Thanks for putting up with me and forgetting all the watch names that I was trying to remember. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Take care.